Hey, hey, how are you? Good. Good. All right. So how did the entire move go? It went good. She's out of Atlanta and back in College Station. Uh -huh. Part of her stuff is here. Yeah. Um, and then she's out, she went off for training because <laughs> she's up and do training with folks. So it's whoosh, whirlwind. Fun. Okay. Yes. It's all good. All good. So um, the angel question is, are you then ready to start underwriting? Yeah. Let's get me doing a napkin and at least start doing a napkin and we'll go from there. I mean, um, and if it's a good one, we'll take it forward. Right. Like okay. Yeah. I was going to ask if, um, if you got any, sounds like you've got some in the queue. So, um, whatever you think. Make, yeah. So give I'm me a couple of them and, and, um, I'll get started on them. Okay. No, no, sounds good. Um, cause I've got, I've got, you gave me access to Monday and I've got a copy of, um, well, you're going to send folders anyway, but I've played around with some of the little training videos on the tool synthesis tool. Okay. And I've got access to Red IQ now. So I think I've got enough to, to do it. If not, I, I'll come back with questions. As you should. As you yeah. always. Um, no, cool. Yeah, we can we can go through one um, together today. Amber, I do want to double check and ask you if you have anything urgent pressing because I know you're working on Icon and it's probably uh, I wanted yeah. to go over that LOI. I'm about three quarters of the way done with that and I, I just got back to my desk. So <clears throat> yeah, we can do that. That's higher priority. And that's learning for me too. So I'm if you don't mind me hanging around. Yeah, yeah there me. is that okay? Is that cool? Yeah, no, absolutely. Let's go do that. Um let's let's get some LOIs ready and prepped. Um, I know in a template there was at least one line we needed to edit because it accidentally still set loan assumption even though it's going over a new new deal. Oh my god, is that for Ani? Yeah, I'm um I'm making a video, so oh. yeah, it's all this footage of him. Yeah. Anyway, I'm gonna start crying if I keep that up for too long. So <laughs> Um, Here so is what I. If anybody does want to adopt a dog, there is one available for adoption, and he's adorable. He's the best, best, goodest boy. All right, can you see my LOI here? Yes, I can. Mm -hmm. I've somehow lost y'all. I can't see y'all anymore. But um, mm -hmm. where did Joe go? We're we're here. It's okay. We're here. Okay. We can anyway. see it. So. Um, Purchase price eighteen million. I thought I was going to do something really fun and change that to eighteen million and one dollars because I just feel like being sassy. <laughs> I feel you. I have one. And words. also to beat out anybody else who put in something at eighteen and to stand out. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I have one with one hundred dollars tagged onto it. Yeah. Um, cool. So earnest money. Um, Probably not a million dollars. <laughs> no, no. Um, usually um, we is a hundred k enough. That's obviously a mistake. Um, um usually we do like one percent, or usually like a little bit under one percent. So, like my gut here would be like hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Okay. One million was a little bit much, and then usually yeah, that's uh, that was that was a comma mistake. Yeah. Too many commas. Just a little bit. And then usually get rid of the okay. comma after the dollar yeah. sign. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, and I usually have we let go uh become non refundable at the expiration of due diligence. So that would be 75k. Okay. Um purchase shall be granted 30 days following execution of the purchase and sale agreement. And full delivery of all documents and seller possessions documents of the yes. Okay. Purchase mm -hmm. shall deliver to seller a formal purchase and sale agreement and escrow instructions upon acceptance of this LOI. Got it. 
Um, title insurance. I'm like literally comparing this to another one that we just. That yeah, I'm like I I have one that I had up. Title insurance is one line. Yeah. So that should be good. This is I had I had changed some of this, and then I was like, oh, hold on. Um, I took some screenshots of what y'all were doing today, but. Cause I don't, this one that I'm like sort of referring to is for horizon, which had a, um, a loan assumption. Yeah. So, so also as of recently, we now have a, a preference for a title company and, um, um, buyer representation as well. That's like another, another thing. So, there's a little update with everything on escrow close. I just plugged that into the chat. Um, because if they want to use their own title company, guess what? That's becoming a point of negotiation now. Got you. I'm gonna just copy and paste that really quick. Um so do I just delete this whole thing from purchaser and then replace with what you just put in, or does any of that need to stay? Um, actually the first part the the sentence that's in red is actually staying. Uh -huh. Um, it's okay. from closing will be handled by that will actually be, um, cha blah, 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 right. changed out by the second sentence, um, started by the escrow and title shall be. Okay. Handled. I see. Uh, 60 days. Yeah. I'm going to start reading like through the okay. next Okay, does that look right? Um, yes. That is perfect. What can cause to in purchase? Is customer in the can requirements? Okay, so time is of the essence is staying as is. The purchase conditions mm -hmm. are staying as is. Um, bias and contingency. Okay, so you have loan approval back there. That's good. Okay, purchase a complete loan application. Provide require current information within twenty one days. So we'll have forty five days from due diligence for loan approval. Okay, got it. So finance and contingency looking good. Additional terms. So that's that. Um, purchase will have forty five days from the due diligence period. Yep for loan approval. So I highlighted that because I was like, what if, so my question is, is what if we don't get loan approval within 45 days of the completion of the due diligence period, like through no, because the bank's slow. Um, hmm. That is a great question that I do not have the answer to. That would be a great one for Sanjay. Um, Let me see what this financing can, he can says help over here. real quick. Um, this, that, that I just don't know the full on answer to. Mm. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, so put a pin in that. Don't forget about it. I'm gonna uh, just yeah, make that whole thing yellow. Okay. I need to learn how to type quicker. Um, this is additional terms. I don't think there's the the template that I was looking at just says both parties will pay their brokers per separate agreements, but this one's got some weird. It it does it does and Did we already reference the extensions. That is also in additional terms, usually. Okay. Yeah. So, um, she made some edits to that earlier today. So I will plop that in there. And that's the entire paragraph for additional terms. Um, so the dollar amount, we have the option to change out. That can be basically part of negotiations as well. 
um I think in a situation like this where we're doing it's 18 million mm -hmm. let's do like and one um yeah so so for for since the purchase is like 18 million I would say let's mm -hmm. add um extension period like either 10 or twelve thousand dollars each instead of 15 because I'm I'm doing 15 for like a 26 million purchase um we can always okay. negotiate yep right so is this THP reality advisors is that that is part correct. of what you yes okay so those are now will be our representation whenever we are um going to close a contract um okay righty and then both parties to this proposal agree to keep all negotiations terms and conditions confidential yep letter is non-binding between both parties it will be ultimately formalized and mutually accepted PSA, if these basic terms and conditions are acceptable to you, please indicate so by signing on the line provided below. Turning is like <laughs> of this letter to the shot. Okay, so under sincerely, mm -hmm. uh, that's Sanjay's name, and then Massive Capital LLC. Uh, AGG. Yes, like that. It all held, so I'm guessing. Got one. Um, like that. Spelled. Yeah, massive or capital. Sanjay Agarwal, Ar Ar massive capital. Uh, no, on like the line underneath it. Yeah, and then I think one uh, comma LLC. Yeah, and then um, just for purchaser on the very first page, we're gonna make it massive capital LLC, a Texas limited liability company, and or assigns. A Texas. Um, there we can just keep Massive Capital LLC uh, with purchaser. That's like right under property description. There we would copy. Um, I, I dropped it in the chat as well. Massive Capital LLC, a Texas limited liability company and or assigns. There we go. Okay. If you can, so after, after the correction, if you can scroll all the way down on the last page of the exhibit, all the way down, I'll tell you one more addition that we made in my last LLCs. One second, all the way down. Yeah, oh. further mm -hmm. down, further down, further down. I want to see the last one. Uh, yeah, so we added audited financials for year 2022 and year 2023 okay and then most of the times the broker listing agent or the seller will come back and say we can provide this but we don't have it audited but might as well ask audited and see what they have thanks that's good to know thank you mm -hmm. to, the, to the template yeah thank you why is that putting a space there? Uh, formatting. I don't know for sure. Um, it's doing it on my end as well. Uh, so okay. what I did is to avoid that, you can go to point number 30, press enter, copy Got and look, yeah, and then, you know, that way everything will be aligned. Thanks. Thank you, Shreya. Problem was welcome. I just do. It still is giving me. Um. Uh, oh. Okay. Um. Okay. Uh, another way to do it is do the same thing, but the last one. Copy it in a notepad and then take it as point 31. So that way, notepad doesn't pick the format. It will only pick the wordings. 
How do I don't know how to copy in Notepad? Yeah, if you do Control C here, open the Notepad and do a Control V. Uh, notepad is a uh, you, if you're using Word or I don't know if you're using a Mac or MacBook or a Windows PC. Do you have a, a so Mac. just like yeah? So if is there something equivalent of a Notepad in Mac? So we have Word, Excel, PowerPoint, but we also have something known as Notepad. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Um, Amrit, it's okay. I can come back in and, and edit it okay. for all this. Uh, yeah, and I can figure that out at some point when y'all aren't looking at me doing this. <laughs> Why does it stress me out? I just, yeah, it's... <laughs> <laughs> For people are looking at me, I'm like, you know how it is. It's like, <laughs> yep, that's when you're just gonna go and trip and fall. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Quick question down at the bottom: Are you not putting Sanjay's title as like founder or principal or something? Uh, we have not done that in the past. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Um. Okay. Uh it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. yeah. So the only thing that I have a question on is, um, is that, uh, this yeah. here. Yeah. I, I, just think, I think he may be in another meeting right now. Okay. Not responding, which usually means he's, he's talking to somebody else. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we can revisit that. Um, we'll probably take do a double check on this again, like first thing tomorrow morning, um, so that it okay. is ready to be sent out. And then, um, yeah, it is looking good. This is looking good. Okay, cool. Thank you for um, spending time with that. I'll finish changing that. And um, cool. Do so, I need to re-upload this into the Google Drive, or is this a live document? Um, I thought you were working it in the Google Drive, right? This is it's on a Google Sheet that you didn't download it into into Word and separately worked on it. I don't know. Like I have to download, you know, oh, the Excel yeah. things into Word. Yeah. So I don't know. I may have so, to. Did you have to download this document for for to be able to work in it or not? Uh, it doesn't look like I had, it looks like I'm actually, it looks like these changes are live. Perfect. Um, yeah, usually with Excel, we bump up against that issue of having to download it onto our computer and then work on it that way because formulas get a little bit screwed up otherwise. Mm -hmm. Word shouldn't. And I say okay. shouldn't because I am like, I like Google Sheets and all of that, but does it always work the way that I want it to work? No. So if you do have things that no. you do need to download, yes, if you've worked on them separately, please do upload them back up onto the Google Drive. So we have the latest and latest information in there. Um, this. So should I change this date to tomorrow because this isn't going to go today? Yeah, that's totally fine. Yeah. Um, uh, shit. Is today the 23rd? Today yeah. is the 23rd. Wow. OK. Is it due right. to tomorrow? No, I. it's due to, uh, uh, let me, I think it's due tomorrow. Awesome. I'm almost positive. Okay. I've no. been away from my desk most of the day. Fun. Um, no, it looks like you've been updating this live in the Google, in the Google Drive. So I think we're okay, cool. fine on that end. Okay. Um, any other pending questions that we need to tackle. Um, otherwise, we shall do some napkin underwriting on something. I have a 4.30 call for work. If you want to just send me something, I'll start looking at it. Is that okay? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. I can, uh, Sorry, I forgot when we got on here, I had a 4.30 stop, but yeah, let me, let's dive in. <laughs> okay, no, sounds good. Um, we can tackle some of the highlights of napkin underwriting just so you have a bit of guidance. Yeah. Where to go. So I will start with, I was actually working on this one earlier. Um, let me just start with, with, um, one in Monday. 
just I also had a question I suppose that maybe if we get through the napkin that if we have time after it um, might be interesting I suppose but um more around when you do the underwriting when we put pref in and maybe just analyzing that and, and what we expect the what we expect sort of to get out of that I suppose if we ask for a million dollars in equity like what's the initial um, upfront cost of that and then what's the long-term cost in comparison to if we get investors and equity through those means mm -hmm. got it okay loaded question love it um i come with a double barrel shotgun today <laughs> <laughs> i like it uh we probably should use a good example for that to kind of show show around how or what um all right i am going to start sharing here so um i was working on this one earlier today but since i worked on it i'll just share what i was working on um so this one is scenic pines so we have the option of dropping some of this information here on monday.com um or starting or initially starting from the synthesis wherever you feel most comfortable so uh, i'm talking here about scenic pines um, so this one is up in Longview, Texas. This is just some basic information that we capture but where we start the napkin process. And I try to make it as easy as possible initially going in so you can do it basically quick and dirty without really taking necessarily a deep dive into everything. Because at the end of the day, um, whoever has been to the master classes recently, Schreier is very, very known for a very particular expression when it comes to underwriting. We need to kill deals quickly, which basically means in napkin underwriting, you want to look at some of the big values to figure out, are we in this, are we playing in the same ballpark or are we too far off to figure out if this is going to be a deal yet or, or no? Um, so napkin underwriting should be done ideally within 15 to 20 minutes. If you're going beyond that, ideally we want to even be like shorter than that, but being realistic, if you're first starting to look at T12s and rent rolls, it's not going to go within 10 minutes. Just as what it is. But if you go beyond that 20 minutes, you started to do detail on the writing and you're taking a deep dive into something and then you get, you go into a rabbit hole where you may and may not come out of um, and where you possibly may be wasting your time. So initially, napkin, let's keep it simple. Um, the initial first two columns here, units and year, this is just basic information about the property. Um, this does give us an idea, hey, does it fit our initial buy box? Um, ideally, we like properties that are 1980s or newer. Um, and ideally, we like properties that are 100 doors and more. So this has a minor flag against it since it is older. So when we then go look at the next couple of columns, we have current rent per door, average square footage, and average market rent per door. All of these three we can find in the rent rule. Um, if we're being easy peasy and lazy, because uh, all of these things do get uploaded into Red IQ and they do get a synthesis created for it, um, our synthesis actually calculates these things for you. It is fairly quickly to go and calculate them yourself. So let me see if I can pull up scenic pines here. I may actually still have them open. Um, so we're just going to very quickly figure out how to take a look at things. And this is something you can very easily do without even us having already created the synthesis. So let me stop sharing. Let me hop into our rent roll. And oh, that is done. So first off, this rent roll format, I don't like it. I like my call. I, I like all mm. of these different incomes in columns next to one another instead of just underneath one another do we get to choose in what format we get a rent roll no but you will you will eventually figure out why this is not always easy to take a look at um because this is 100 doors and all of a sudden i'm like 500 lines and before we are at the summary 
Now, how can we very quickly figure out what our rent, uh, current rent is, our square footage, and our market rent? So usually brokers are so kind to share the market rent, share the total sum of the square footage, and right here, this line item is showing us our current rent presently. Um, to do it very quick and dirty, we are going to say, hey, I'm going to take this total, I'm going to divide it by the total amount of units, there we go, we have our average and that is looking very off from what it is. So another reason why I do not, ah, no. There's something off with this one. Okay, I'll go double check that. But this, likely this line item is going to be included in this one as well, as well because um, HUD income they are still paying the the base income um, of of rents, and sometimes it's shown as supplemental income uh, whenever you're looking into Red IQ. But HUD is paying along the base of the actual rent amount. So if you see things like that, basically these two are already the same. So I should have done this plus the HUD. Um, divided by the total amount of doors. Um, it was still coming. I had something different in my Monday, so I may have made an error somewhere. Now, the square footage should be a lot easier. We take the total square footage. Again, divide that by our number of units, which is coming out to 942. That is exactly what we had. And we're going to do the same thing for our market rent. So that is the total expected market rent per the broker. Whenever we're still looking at it from napkin underwriting perspective, go with what the broker says. Um, whenever we're looking at detailed underwriting, forget what the broker says. Um, initially, I should basically say it this way. If we're going into figuring out what the actual market rent is, you're going you're going in a rabbit hole. That is gonna take some time to figure it out because you're looking at different sources. So initially, just for time's sake, we're gonna say at this stage of the game, whatever the broker says is probably right. And then whenever we are taking it down into detail or underwriting, it's gonna be, well, let's see if we can actually verify what the broker said is correct. So I'm telling uh, you- Because if you run it with the broker's numbers and it's not even close, then it's like Correct. you're wasting your time, right? Correct. Kill it, <laughs> boom. <laughs> if, you, if you're close on those numbers, then you can go in and yeah. you might take it to detail. Yeah, okay. That makes yeah. total sense. Yeah, mind. Um, am I going to say that all brokers lie? No, they don't. But they're also going to be very specific with what comms they're going to give you. Because right. their end goal is to help sell the building for their client which is a seller, it's not us. Right. So their and fiduciary duty is with the seller. This is good, but I'm sorry, I got to go to this other call. If you want to send me something, feel free. If you want me to circle back and we talk some more before we do that, I'm okay too. Just let me know. But I'm yeah. ready to get rolling. And Sounds thank good. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Um, anybody else want to continue with with napkin under I actually under have a question. I have a yeah. question on this. So you have your your rent of that's really small. It looks like forty eight thousand and some change, yeah. divided by a hundred units is you know plus plus your HUD income. Yeah. Um, divided by a hundred units is five oh nine. But that's um that doesn't take into account any vacants that there are. Um, no, because 509 is obviously not their average rent. No, it is not. It is not. Um, so this is usually a quick and dirty way of figuring it out. Mm -hmm. but as it turns out, it's, it's not in this case. Now, if we then have the time and have uploaded everything beautifully in Red IQ, we should get some more realistic numbers because you are right. Um, there's a lot of vacancy. They have about 40, 44 doors that are 
vacant and then eight more that are non-revenue. Um, so mm -hmm. there's something going on here, which I would say there's an opportunity here. Yeah. There, there's definitely an opportunity here to figure something out. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Could you yeah. extrapolate that to the other 52 units? You know, if you took that, um, like just take this number, this yeah. 40 or the 52 that you had and and like, multiply it by however many units that is. Uh, 48. So let's see. Let's see if that comes up to the number that's actually in our synthesis. All right. Oh, there we go. That is closer. It's not exact, but it's closer. So what's in the synthesis? Yeah, just out of curiosity. Um, 1016. So it's pretty close. It is pretty close. It may yeah. just be that this is then considered supplemental rent and it's not participating along. Okay. Right, right, right. right. Yeah, that makes sense. So I'm going to see this is a good guidance. Um, mm -hmm. if you don't have the tools, um, at the end of the day, yeah. it, the entire, uh, description of napkin underwriting did come up over the part of like, you can literally write it on the back of a napkin yeah. to see if you want to move forward with something. Yes or no. Um, this yeah. is not the formal way of underwriting detail. Underwriting is the actual underwriting. Um, but first you yeah. want to make sure should I spend the time now? Um, and it is important that you can actually look at those numbers and go figure it out. If you listen to, honestly, any of the principles, they have this beautiful mind where they can just look at a rent roll and take a glance at a T12 and be like, this is a great deal and we should go and do this. Um, I need a little bit more time to figure that out. Uh, do we eventually all want to get to the goal of we want to take a quick glance at things and figure out like I should spend more time on this? Yes. Are we going to get there overnight? No. Unless your brain functions that way, which kudos, mm -hmm. teach me the ways. Um, so when we're basing it on synthesis, everything is actually populated right here in actuals and unit mix tab. Um, this is purely based from data we download from Red IQ. Obviously, the rent roll and the T12 go in there, get mapped the proper ways that they need to get mapped. We double check them before we even start this download process. But this is probably a quicker, easier way to review what your average square footage is, where your average current rent is, and what your average target rent is per the rent roll. Um, once you start taking a further deep dive into your comps, obviously you will want to come and make edits here based on your research. Um, this is, of course, also 100% based on the T12 that we were provided. If you do want to take a look at it in a different format like T1 or T3, you absolutely can. And then, of course, the list of other income should be here and should be correct. Um so have I made it easy peasy for myself? Um, I've mapped these key pieces of information like NOI, um, the average square footage, average uh, current rent, target rent. I mapped those right here in, in our little napkin calculator. Um, so these fields are literally coming from the actual and unit next tab. And then this is calculated based on the income and expenses that we have here. These is mapped to our dashboard where we have those numbers coming through. So a lot of this is honestly done for you that at this point, you just kind of need to figure out where is my cap rate for this area. So this property particularly is in Longview, Texas, which if you're not familiar with it, is almost by the border of Louisiana. Um, and would not be considered a metro town. Let me pull that up. I'll show you guys. Um, and especially for markets that you are not necessarily very familiar with or that are new to you. Um, so right here is Longview, Texas. If we zoom further out, you see here the border to Louisiana. 
And if we zoom even further out, this is where DFW is. So in comparison, this is a small Bhutanese town. Um, is it that Bhutanese? No, it's probably still one of the bigger towns in that area, but it's a town, it's not a city. Um, so this location is going to behave very differently than we would underwrite in DFW or Houston or literally any other metro area. Um, so in those cases, I 100% go and rely upon a co-star report because this is literally the very first time I've ever underwritten anything in um, Longview. Um, so I 100% rely on what CoStar can provide me, which should be scenic climbs. Um, that's why I try to give you guys a CoStar report anytime um, we do get a new property in there so you can go and take a look. If you do have a login to CoStar, you can hop into the analytics. The market cap rate um, graph is actually all the way at the bottom on the right. And here you have a little bit more of a dynamic view. Um, so at present Q2, they're at a, um, I would say for long view, I would go with that one to three star. So a 7.3 um, cap. And then 2029, they're expecting it to sell at 6.7. Um, now this particular property was brought up this morning and Sanjay's view on this was, well, it's long view. I don't feel comfortable going any lower than 7%. So that is what we went with. Um, so in that, where is it hiding? There it is hanging. Um, so for my own reference, I very briefly marked in here, hey, our cap rate at purchase, I'm gonna pop that in at a 7.5. Did it say 7.3 in, in the report? Yes, but I mean, it is a property from 1972 and it is in Longview. I don't know that market that well, so I will round up for potential error instead of say, sure, it's probably gonna go at seven. And then per advice of Sanjay, we're sticking with 7%. So this should help quite a bit in guiding you guys uh, down. Some other key points I would, research as you're going through this and you can do a lot of research into the demographics and into the area but some of the really really big key points are these what is your average income um so you can use just this map for that is it in a flood zone and what is the crime there so for that i reference two separate sources for for crime um, because community crime app is wonderful if the local police are reporting all the crimes to it. Not every area does that or has that data available. So right here, I have no data. But um, the community, the crimegrade.org did say that the crime in that area is a D minus, which usually means it's pretty heavy with crime. It goes from A to F. In F, I would almost consider that a war zone. C, C is fairly normal. Yes, there, there will always be some crime. Um, a plus is always better than a minus. A D minus is like there's there's quite a bit. Um, A's and B's are super, super good and, and super healthy. So I wouldn't worry about those too much. Um, okay. And um Amber Sanjay can join in about 15 minutes um, in this call. So we'll cool. put a bow on it towards the end of the call. So definitely don't close that yet. Um, okay. So other things that I have here, referential. Uh, oh, no, my apologies. Uh, we do look at population and population growth, or if there is population growth. Um, in bigger metro areas, that's going to be less of a concern. I mean, I think in, in Houston, you have like two plus million living there. If you then have something that is about stable, I'm not too worried about it. But for example, I think we were looking at Huntsville, uh, Texas. I think it had like a minus 1.5 or 1% 1 
in population decline. Huntsville is, is about an hour or so north of Houston. Um, that to me is concerning because there's all that there's not already like the biggest population there. I think it's still over a hundred thousand. But you know, if you start to have that declining population, all of a sudden who's gonna keep renting your apartments if you <laughs> if they're leaving? Um, so that may warrant additional insight into what's happening there and should I invest there or is this not the right place? If Longview had a declining population, we probably would not even be talking about this. Um, the only reason we honestly are is because a, I believe a lender took possession of this property and was trying to sell it for a decent amount less. So for CAD, this thing is valued at 8.4 million. It was foreclosed upon this past April, and now they're trying to sell it for 6.5. So it's worth a look, especially if even at a 7.5 and, and an 8% cap, we're still higher than their asking price. Now, do they have some issues with vacancy? Yes, they do. So further investigation is necessary, but that is the reason why it has been moved to detailed underwriting to start doing that further investigation because right now we have not figured out the full picture by just looking at this data and some of the basic data down here. Any questions about that? Yeah, I have a question. Um, you said this was foreclosed on? It was, yes. And it went back to the bank? It went back to the bank. Do you know what they were asking at the foreclosure auction? I do not. Um, no. no. So the lender now just have have, have used Newmark to start promoting this out. And I think they've, they've only sent it to like a select amount of people that they've worked with in the past. Um, so we have the sure. opportunity to take a look at. I don't think it is officially on market. I don't know if it even will. Um, mm -hmm. But they're just trying to recuperate some cash. And yeah. from... My perspective, and I'm I'm probably not even the most knowledgeable person out there, I have a gut feeling that scenarios like this may be happening more often in the future mm -hmm. if there will be more people that are going to default on their loans. So yeah. another reason why it is key to go quickly through these scenarios so we can go and spend the time on the ones that are worth it um, and and that hopefully can pan out um, at the end of the day. If for example, right now, Ladder Capital was asking for, I'm gonna throw out a stupid amount, but if they were asking for nine or 10 million, we could already tell them now like, yeah, sorry, dude, I'm not coming to bail you out. Mm -hmm. And then is that it, that. Does it have that loan info by any chance on co on the CoStar report? I didn't Sometimes see. they do. Well, let's um, let's, let's go back to. Coastal. I'm always just like curious about like what things you know what they go to auction for and yeah. So it's just um, out of curiosity then. So. And you, you got kicked out. Yeah, um, I don't recall even seeing that because it was still noted under Wolf Investments, who were the previous owners. Um, I think there was a mention of Ladder Capital somewhere. Um, not even that. So they're basically trying to sell it for the loan amount that they initially had it for, which is probably still pretty close. Um, who knows yeah. how not so long they have been paying, uh, since it's only been known for three years. So Can I Can you know. click on loan across the top? There we go. Loan. Yeah. I'm not going to give any more detail. No. Uh... 2.8. Yeah, but that's from even oh, that was that's posed. That was a previous. Yeah, that's from the previous one. So that's yeah, it. at thousand. Um yeah, yeah, it seems Ladder is just trying to get the money back that they loaned. Yeah. But it did still the previous owner. So um it's mm -hmm. not even updated in here that ladder capital is an Audi owner. Yeah. Okay. Cool beans. But yeah. You guys can find out a lot of stuff on CoStar. Um, okay. 
any other questions when it comes to napkin underwriting for now? Um, like I'm gonna go and try and find a deal where we were using pref equity to kind of balance things out. On the one hand, I wanted to say Fredericksburg, but that's really a tricky one to go and play around with. Um, Amber, did we use Pref Equity for Icon? By any chance that you know of, off the top of your head? Uh, let me, let me see. Um, so the, yeah, we did, sorry, I couldn't find my mute button. We did for icon. Okay. So, um, I just downloaded so I'm not messing it up on the Google drive itself. I just want to, that's not the right version. Okay. Well, this is our version. So I am, this is, I think one of the older versions. So I'm just going to mm -hmm. use this. I'm going to play with it a little bit just for informational purposes. This is not the final version. I'm not going to upload this back into the Google Drive either. This is on my personal laptop. But the entire premise of trying to make a deal work and to try and get our amount of equity down is the use of perfect equity where handy and dandy. And probably some pieces of your question, Blake, I'm going to have to ask you to come back and repeat to make sure that I'm covering everything. Um, so we are kind of stuck with our stabilized loan at a max of usually uh, 70, 75% max. Um, we do always need to have a down payment. So at that point in time, we are 75% um, loan and 25% uh, of it in a scenario of... Um, we have that as our cash. So that cash plus the acquisition fee plus the closing cost, any type of rehab needed, any reserves, this is the amount that is basically what we need to go on equity raise. The ways that we can go about that is, of course, um, through the syndication and having the LPs invest. Um, for as a guidance, let me just kind of show you this. As a guidance, we are going to try. And I say try, this does not always work. And it's sometimes a good deal will have a higher equity raise. But we're going to try to keep our equity raise about ish 30% of our purchase price. Um, just for the reason being that if we have about 50% of it to raise, that's going to be a tough pill to swallow. Now, how can we make that equity raise a little bit lighter in any scenario is by supplementing it with preferred equity. So those, Sajjan and Shreya are going to explain this so much better than I can, but it's basically, it's somebody with a lot of money where we're going to say like, hey, John, um, can you write me a big check and help participate in the zeal? And then basically you're going to be Top of the line, like once we actually have money in our cash flow, you're going to be the first person that's going to get his, his installments back. Um, or we can basically pay him back through through a refinance, something like that. But instead of just asking 25 people for $50,000, where Bish is just going to go and ask John for one big check just to make our raise a little bit easier. Um, but it's going to be treated differently than a passive investor LP. Um, how we plug that into our system is, for example, we're going to turn this thing on. We're going to say uh, we are going to get a pref equity of about $2 million. Um, this will vary. This will also be up to negotiations, but it will vary per the amount. So the lower the amount, um, the higher the interest rate is. If we're talking about like five million and up, um, we may only have to pay like a forty percent interest. I think under two million, we're like closer to sixteen or eighteen percent even. So 
if you do are in that lucky situation where you just have a big pot of gold, um, pref equity may be a very interesting way of getting richer. So those are returns I would love to see for myself any day of the week. Um, now, we do need to limit how much we can go into pref equity. So um, we usually try to stay somewhere between like 82 to 85% of our purchase price. Um, so since 75% is already going through the stabilized debt, um, how we can very quickly see how much we can do is, um, what am I doing here? I know, I know what, I, okay, 85%, there we go. So 85% of 21 million is that. And then we're obviously gonna have to take out the current loan amount. So we have an opportunity to add $2,100,000 uh, $100, as, as PREF equity max. Now, that is completely negating that this at 21 million does not work. This is just for to show you how, how it shows up here. Um, that supplemental loan will also show up here in our PNL. Um, this will just gather like all of the debt stacking, but this is now higher because we've added our uh, pref equity in there. So if I take this back out and then I have to put this back to zero and two off, and if we're just gonna stick with our stabilized debt, all of a sudden we have like $400,000 less to pay um, in interest or total debt than we did if we added that pref equity. So it's not because we have room that we should add pref equity. Um, this, at the end of the day, still needs to be a positive number. So we do need to have the cash flow. Um, so it works in some scenarios and it doesn't work in others. Um, that's why you see a lot of times when we are reviewing deals, we're hopping back and forth between the dashboard and the PNL just to make sure like, hey, are we still okay with our debt service, um, debt, yeah, DSCR, debt service coverage ratio? Are we still cash flowing? Does this number still make sense? Um, because at the end of the day, putting together a PNL is as much an art as putting together the debt stacking. Um, and it needs to work, not hinder us but we also need to still be able to make the best possible offer so we can win it um, without shooting ourselves in the foot that we can't pay our bills with it anymore. So I will pause there and then ask you if there's any other questions regarding PREF equity that I have not covered or if I just made it so much more difficult for you to understand. No, that's all well and good. Um, I suppose the other question I had was just around what sort of fees do they charge for, for the initial to, to get into it with them? So um, I don't have all the details on that specifically. I do know that gets tied into closing costs. So it might be that if we are doing um, prep equity that we may have to change this number to like 4%, I think 3.5% is kind of taken into account some buffer that if we want to do prep equity, we're fine. Um, so yeah, closing costs come into account and then just the other cost is just whatever the interest rate payment is. Um, so if I open this back up, not 200,000, it's gonna be it's gonna be that income and that's just gonna come out of our cash flow before anybody else get paid. Um, so the, the beautiful thing as a pref equity partner, you're paid about the same time as the bank does before there's any distributions to LPs. They, they, they get first dips because they're shelling out a big, big amount of money. Yeah. Second position loan sort of thing. So it comes up just like it's getting a loan from the bank would be the same kind of paperwork probably um yeah um that i don't know Blake, for sure. i can't imagine yes we were talking about this yesterday or maybe it was today i can't remember on the icon 
and Mike was saying, I actually wrote this down that there's a 5% fee to find, to get to basically place the pref of whatever yeah. that prep is. And I, I yeah. think there probably is a range there, like Ellen was saying, but he's like, if you use 5%, you should probably be okay. But oh, he right. did say that baked okay. into the closing costs. Yep. So you just, you just raise that acquisition closing cost to 5% and, and that would be all you'd need to do. Is that correct? I think so. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. I suppose, how do you find these people as well? Are they? <laughs> well, that's, that's the why next... you're paying 5%, right? You're, you, you find the people who know the people. Uh, yeah. 5%. Yep. Yep. That networking. makes a lot of sense. Like networking. 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 The greatest word. Networking. Yes. Absolutely. So, um, I am, uh, if there's no more questions when it comes to prep equity, I am going to, Move it back over to Icon and Hassan Sanjay joined so we can we can finish that one question off. Uh, Amber, would you mind sharing the LOI, please? Sure. Okay. So Sanjay, I think we've pretty much went over everything for the LOI, but there was one question I did not know how to properly answer without um, Okay. So that's here on the financing contingency. Um, actually, it's just the second part of that. That's um, I wondered if um, purchaser shall purchaser mm -hmm. shall have four days from the due diligence period for the loan approval. And I just was wondering, like, what happens if 45 days go by and through, you know, no fault of our own, the bank has not um, approved this. Yeah, so it this is 40, like this is 45 days from DD. So if there's a 30 day DD, 45 days, that's like uh, 75 days. So that's two and a half months, right? <clears throat> huh. So that's a lot of time and should be sufficient, right? If we can't do it in that, either something wrong with the property or seller didn't provide something or we just can't do it. But financing contingency usually is, like we have the option to cancel the contract. Okay. Right? And should I leave that at 45 days? You know, these are all negotiations. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, we're not that excited about this deal. So I would mm -hmm. say leave 45, they come back and go lower, whatever, that's fine. If we were really excited about a deal, we may do it quicker because we would have gone through and get, get, maybe do an application, uh, you know, submit the information even before we even have a contract, signed contract. So. Uh, but yeah, I would start with 45 on a deal like this and. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. I think that's the only question we had. Okay, good. Uh, sorry guys. I, I had to go to the bank and move uh, some for Amberwood stuff, but, um, Chirai, you had some questions. Yes. I spoke to Abraham. He's one of the principals with GREA at length, almost an hour and 15 minute call. Uh, I have the revised underwriting prepared <clears throat> after I spoke to him. Uh, so we started, so I'm happy to share and go through the discussion. Yeah, yeah. If you have time, let's... let's uh... Yeah, yeah, I do have, I do have time. Uh, sharing my screen. I'll tell you exactly where we made changes from the last we discussed. So that way, you know, it's easier for us to understand. Uh, sharing my screen, sharing, sharing. Let me know if you can see my Excel file. Okay. Let me know if you can see my Excel I file. can see it, yeah. Okay. So uh, last time, and so I'm, Number one, capex and reserves. I think I made a small list here, just so that we do not forget what items we need to discuss. Capex mm -hmm. and reserves points mark. Okay, capex and reserves. Number one. Okay, so he had given this list to us: unit upgrades, 
what I did is out of 90 units, if he, uh, he upgraded these, I focused on the ones not upgraded and created the math. So he said, no, these are the ones uh, unnecessarily, the other units which are not upgraded. So there is nothing like a classic and upgrade. All units have been upgraded in the last three, four years. He sent me pictures of units which have not been upgraded. So he said, unless and until you see them, uh, once you see them, you'll be convinced that these are, are good units. Uh, these are some units which some things were broken and therefore they had to upgrade it. So he said, don't take it this way. Um, they, um, all the units have a good uh, uh, you know, color and feel and everything, but there were some units that required additional attention. So I said, okay, that's fine. So in our, uh, so unless, and so for this piece, Sanjay, unless and until we don't see it, we cannot believe it. So earlier we did this math of finding out which units were remaining and then we put the numbers there. Now we saw the pictures, the non-upgraded pictures also look decent. So I'm like, okay, I still want to keep the countertop, kitchen countertop uh, 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 change. And besides that, uh, let's put $4,000 uh, per unit. So I'm. we are keeping 360000 of which 81000 goes for kitchen countertop, and the remaining as buffer for internal capex for now. Uh, then he also shared another, he shared quite a bit of documents today. Uh, so uh, then he also shared unit walk no, this was not it. Uh, unit upgrades. Yeah, this one. These are the external capex that has already been done. The roof is three years old. Uh, they have done some grading, office remodeling, uh, laundry equipment areas. They have made some replacement. All that, there are plenty of things that they have done here. He's excited to show what these are. Most of these are external capex. This has been done in the last two years. Uh, so keeping all of this in mind, I'm still keeping our capex as 1500. Mm -hmm. What if we need a fresh coat of paint? Are you happy with 1500? Oh, exterior 135. Yeah. So he, they have spent a million plus a one point almost 1.6 million on. Laundry equipment, gutter replacement, HVAC, all these are exterior. Uh, having gone through this list, I said, what if there is something missing uh, after we see a walk, <clears throat> after, after a walkthrough? So I added 1,500 unit. Is this good enough? We still need some. Uh, you you have now visited this one, right? Yeah, uh, my visit is pending. Okay. Yeah, so until we do a visit, right, like, it's, oh. it's it's difficult to, to assess anything. Okay. So I think keep it two thousand. Uh, yeah, I I think so. I would say, uh, yeah, some some number generally in okay. good condition. We are saying the property based on the feedback and capex. So um, we have some specific item uh, as curb replacement. Okay. Okay. Then um, there was a discussion around other residential income. So the way each of these townhomes, and there are 90 townhomes, are deeded as a separate property. So in the books of HCAT, there are 90 properties. Each of them have their own property value. Mm. So having said that, uh, we were discussing about residential income. So he said the parking lot is attached to the property. And it will be silly to say, um, now we are charging for parking. Instead of that, bump the, uh, we have a scope to bump the uh, rent, or uh, escalate the rent for the property. Uh, I'll talk that in detail when we go through PNL. So uh, park charging for parking may not be a good idea, but charging for valid trash is a good income. The other good income is there is a lot of space between two property buildings. So uh, invariably, each of the property has like a small garden. If we increase the perimeter of the garden by putting a fence, we can allow that to be like an additional dog park or a fence garden area for pets, for pet owners, something like that. He said, if that's an idea that we would love to play with, it 
you can charge seventy-five dollars um, per house. So I said, how many tenants do you currently have uh, who are pet owners? So he said, I don't know that number. Let's keep it fifty percent. I just took it as one third, thirty percent. That's good. Okay. That's good. So for capex, long story short, I am just saying put T multiplied by five hundred to construct that fence building. Is it yeah. good? So maybe thousand just to be concerned. Thousand. Okay. Yeah. It's and it's not that big of a number anyway. So yeah, escrow replacement. Putting this number just to be conservative, uh, and this is a total of tax, insurance, and reserves. If we close between now and three months from now. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm not keeping any tax and insurance holding because that money is going to come from escrow. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Uh, operating reserve same. Uh, everything gets calculated. Uh, the buffer 10%, 5% is only added to renovations, not to the escrow replacement. This is good. This is good. Okay. Yeah. Next, uh, uh, next, 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 PNL. So I haven't made any changes to PNL, though he asked me to make changes. I didn't make any changes to revenue. Let me quickly show you what this is. So currently, as of today, he shared the rent roll as of 14th of May 2024. That rent roll for Two bed, I should have written this three bed. Uh, that rent roll for two bed and three bed is uh, 1400 and 1800 almost. If you calculate this based on weighted average as of today, we are 1.3 ASF. Uh, a year from now, if we increase this by 7%, in this will get to 1.39. So in our PNL, originally we have taken it to 1.39 as the destination point. See, we have taken 10.5 percent here. Out of this, we have already moved from 1.26 to 1.3. Right here. Okay. All we have to do is between now and 12 months, we have to get to 1.39. So this 7 percent is doable. So Similar. One, huh, go ahead, one thing to keep in mind is. We don't have to move to 139. The way the PNL is, we don't have to move to 139 by the end of the 12 months, right? Go back to PNL. The back PNL, to PNL is assuming that you will have dollar 39 from the day one, and you're collecting 1626 for the 12 month. That's how this PNL is, right? Yeah, so okay. So if you're starting at 130, unless you end up to somewhere around dollar 48, right? Assuming it's a straight line, right? Hmm. Um, if you start at dollar 30 and you end up at dollar 48, your average for the year is dollar 39, right? I see. So keep keep that in mind that as we're going up in rent, the first few months is behind. And then the last few months have to be ahead to balance out this performer. I see your point. Okay. So in given that, what but do I you think? I, but I thought the comps were even higher than what they have here. Uh, what the, the seven, eight percent here, right? Uh, so yeah, comps were higher. Comps were one. Yeah, let me tell you what the comps were. Was 1.43. 1.43, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so, so yeah. So PNL is good that we can end yeah. up to 139. Yeah. But when it comes to executing this, keep in mind at the end of 12 months, your average would be more like dollar 43. Yeah. And now for year two, your increase is actually less, right? Yes. So because exactly. You're, you're it. starting a lot higher than where you are already so agreed agreed so f first year is always the tough year once you weather that and do it right then it's it's all falls in place fine agreed uh so uh, for now we are okay with this number right yeah i, I think us. this is good this is yeah good. now concessions and bad debts currently there is zero in the year 2023 the total bad debts absolute figure was two thousand five hundred dollars which in percentage terms is uh, terms is negligible, like 0.03% or something. 
do you want to still keep this as 2% yeah i think we need to keep some yeah. we will have some yeah. yes yeah yeah other residential income oh sorry what did i yeah other residential income i changed as follows for end of year one only 50% parking i took the parking away end of year one only 50% of the tenants will um, buy the valet trash uh, service from us in year two the remaining 50% uh, and the $75 for pet fee i just said 30 out of 90 a uh, zero for you just keeping it conservative okay now comes the real estate taxes so the actual real estate taxes i have note from here from hcad everything here is the email from uh, by the way he said that uh, massive capital should maybe knowing who the owners are so i said tell me more about them so he shared some details uh, let me bring that up right here uh, do we know them douglas gordon and richard rizito um these don't ring a bell for me okay mike or Schreier might know so okay and never mind coming back to so this is a note from them the latest value is 7.798 uh, almost 7.8 million so let me show you an excel sheet where he has i said give me all the working for all 90 properties so he has an excel sheet here if you follow the excel sheet uh, for 2023 these are individual property uh, HCAD values. So, for example, if I click this, it will go to the public HCAD.org site, and it will show you will show you that the property value is eighty one nine fifty six. Okay. Okay. So, hey, what the, is their it, what is their loan situation on this? A uh, loan situation. There is a loan assumption. Oh, we're assuming uh, an agency loan. Uh, we are assuming agency loan, okay, yes. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes so, agencies won't consider it as a multifamily loan and they will say it's a single family if they are individually parceled. But if they already have that, then that's... They already it. have that, so we yeah. are going to assume it. Yeah. So if you see the trend of the, uh, uh, what you may say, assessed value, in 2020, there was a purchase and that time the value was... 7.4 million it went down to 6.5 million in 2021 in 2022 it went to 7.7 .7, and then to 7.8 almost so in our calculation so the actual value that has hit the gl is 159000 uh 158340 uh in my in our PNL calculation for year one, I'll tell you what I've done and happy to make the change. In year one, I took um, the value seven seven nine seven point seven nine eight multiplied by assessed value one seventy two eighty six, whereas the actual is one fifty eight something. So in the PNL for year one, I took this for year two, I just took a flat. 10 million because the trend is still playing within 7.58, 7.58. I just conservatively took um, it 10 million uh, because HCAD is not going to look, is going to look at properties about 3 million. They are not going to get into each of the properties as such. So, is 10 million a good conservative estimate? I, I think that's more than good. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's more than good. Yeah. Okay. So uh, all the calculations come accordingly. Uh, insurance, uh, we had taken same 2,500. The current insurance provider for the year 2024 is charging them 1,900. He gave me the details of everything, including the name, address, everything. He said, you can run the quotes by them. They can show you the details and you can compare line item wise deductions and everything with your insurance provider but uh, so this is going to be higher right oh uh, sorry our basis of insured value will be higher yeah the replacement cost will be higher uh, yeah so i would keep a little higher 
Okay. 1800 a door is very high. That's very high insurance. So I would keep a little high because a little high. Know, okay. Yeah. We so... can still have those guys quote for us. Uh, minus 15. Yeah. So, you know, maybe we'll be a little lower, but yeah, let's keep a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Then, uh, so mainly in expenses, Sanjay, he asked me about contract services. So I said, this may not be accounting wise, this expense might be sitting somewhere else. That's why it's showing a small number. This is typically what we come up to. So he, he was okay with that. And he just questioned one thing, landscape and grounds. So in 25,000 that they have spent as actuals, 6,000 was some kind of capex. So he said, is it okay if you take 6,000? So I said, 6,000 one way or the other is not going to make a difference. So I, let's just keep it. So okay. in our original number, we just reduced this by 10%. Yeah. And we'll just keep it at that. Right? The 2,000 okay. a month is a lot for landscaping. Yeah. Especially correct. for a 90 unit property. Yeah. Should we go down further or would we? You can think? go down a little bit, minus 15% or minus... minus Yeah. Minus 20. Maybe. Minus 20, yeah. So that's like a 15, yeah, that's a little good. over 1,500 a month. That's good. Yeah. That's all I had for this tab, NL. Uh, let me go to the covered CapEx results, closing cost. Okay, okay. we'll that's come good. here. Good, yeah. uh, dashboard, let me quickly. So we said CapEx is always problem. Okay. This is now, the one with Cheyenne, right? This is the one which, yeah, with Cheyenne's group. It's just that a different principle is looking. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. Yeah. They're asking now, is 13, right? So they shared a loan statement uh, in May, which has a balance of 6.68. If we are closing this in three months, we would have further paid interest and principles for three months. So I'm reducing that from here. I'm coming to an exact loan amount as of the day of closing, which means... 52% of the overall purchase price. I'll reduce the purchase price, but let me just go through the math. Um, that gives us um, an opportunity to take 75% up to supplemental and the other is pref. Are you happy with this and the percentages? So, yeah, so supplemental with that rate should be okay. Uh, pref had such a small check, maybe a challenge, but I think we can do like a 15 split, split on our raise as a fixed interest so can i make it 15 percent? what do you think Sanjay? what did you have before this i had 13 13 yeah yeah keep 15 keep 15 keep 15 okay uh keep uh, 15 yeah so that that's okay so that's good blunder yeah. is 1.27 yeah so uh cap rate at sale six or you're going to make it 6.25 so six what a year is this uh, this year, this is 84, 1984. 84, yeah, six is good. I think six is six good. Six is good. Okay, so that was it. Now, just to test the model, I kept it as 12.8. Uh, I had the uh, model that I was sharing with him had 12. That was the earlier one that we looked at. So at the end of the call, uh, he shared a few things. And he, I said, okay, tell me what is a whisper price, like the serious one. So he said, Give me, see, find a way to get to 12.3 uh, and, uh, and at the negotiation, max will get to 12.5 and call it close if you can get to that point. If you see the numbers here, we are. He, he told me that or you told yeah, me? He, he told me that. He told okay. Me that. Yeah. So he said, uh, and what I was sharing was the earlier sheet, which had 12 million. So he said 12 million with escrow is too less. Get to 12.3. Uh, in negotiations, max we will get to 12.5 and close it as much as possible. Though the seller wants 12.8, but if you say 12.3 LOI with escrow replacement, maximum in 100, 200K additional, he, we should be able to close. So he told me that and he really insisted, uh, come and let's have a detailed walkthrough. That way you'll get more confidence in terms of your, uh, for your CapEx yeah. planning. Who who is the, uh, who is the servicer of the loan here? Servicer of the loan is Northmark. <laughs> finally, oh, oh, this is actually Northmark. Yes, not, yes, yes. One second, Mark, one second. Right? Uh, no, this is Northmark. One second. Loan statement. 
Okay, okay, so we have Cheryl and she can she can guess. Not Mark. <laughs> Not Mark. Okay, okay, that's good. You know, I want to go. We can go aggressive on this one. Yeah. Um. You know, just that's... say, hey, let's schedule. We can schedule maybe Monday walk through. I'll come, and uh, just submit the tomorrow. Talk about LOI presenting LOI to the seller, and we can do. Let's do an email to Cheryl on this. Yes, I'll do an email. I fo I'll follow your email and just reply yeah. to her with a change subject line. Yeah. Yeah. So this, I just say, hey, we're we're doing LOI at twelve three on this. Yeah. Um, and and again, you know, this is not recorded, right? This is recorded. Okay. How do we record stop that. recording here? I don't like um, it. I don't think we have it. the power. I think Mike has the power since he set this up originally. Okay, okay. So we I can call you back later. Uh but you know, let's let's do this uh do this in. Uh yeah. do aggressive LOI email to Cheryl. So but what I was getting to is we can even say, hey, you give our price 12.3, we will do non-refundable hard upfront. Um and then, and then we ask for due diligence documents while we are working PSA. So by the time PSA is done, we know property is in the shape of what we are assuming here. And that we will confirm with Cheryl. So then like we just close this one. And yeah. this is a loan assumption, it should go a lot quicker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this, and, this is it, beautiful. This is beautiful. And it's numbers are working out so well. Yeah. Again, don't tell this to broker. Don't tell this uh, okay. anywhere else. This just stays here amongst us yeah. uh, because we don't know what unforeseen will come to us. Yeah. Right? Yeah. As yeah. business owners, you never know. So, yeah. And if this works, this will be like a, a off market check mark for us. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one more off market deal coming from Cheyenne. Yeah. He's like, I'm waiting for two more documents. Let me put that bundle together before sending it. Okay. Okay. That's perfect. Awesome. Good job. Good job, Chirai. Yeah, is... No, no. This has to get to the next level. I'm excited. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This one, I think we are giving what they're asking. So we hmm. should be able to get there on this. Monday, can I pick something or do you want to look at your schedule? Uh, yeah. You know, Monday, let me just quickly look here. Today. And Monday is good. Monday is a public holiday. I just want to confirm that these guys are not off. They are available to yeah, show them. I'm okay Monday or Tuesday. I mean, I can do work, make it any any day work. Uh, yeah, I'll prefer this. Monday if possible, yeah, if you so, are okay with that. Yeah, for a deal, I'll make any of these days work. So awesome. just, just talk and schedule and uh, I'll likely get there like between 9 and 10 a.m. So something after 10 a.m. And I likely like to head back by, you know, four or five. five. So, so something between 10 and four is perfect. Okay. Uh, last one on this LOI, I'll prepare. We already have one, which I just have to adjust the numbers. Yeah. And I'll send it to you so you can offline see the copy. Yeah. Uh, Cheryl, I'll send a note. But Cheryl, we are also asking for supplemental, right, Sanjay? Yeah. So what we're asking Cheryl is, hey, we are making offer... Uh, 12, uh, around 12.3 on this. Here's our underwriting. We are thinking, uh, would love to get your feedback on our underwriting, number one. Number two, uh, she will she will share the Yardi matrix report, which will give us some more insights into the current, uh, when it was purchased and some, some history. Okay. Um, and then the third is we would like to do a supplemental what, can you look and see based on the T12, will it support a supplemental and would it work? Um, because uh, it, the property finances has to support the supplemental. Okay. Yeah. How much of uh, underwriting do we share the whole? Y yeah, we, you can or share. This. No, you can share the whole with Cheryl. That's fine because uh, uh, the the biggest uh, caveat of sharing with the lender, uh, we don't want to share with the underwriter, is whatever capex we have, they see we are doing that capex and they require us to put it in the escrow, right? Oh. I don't want to put it in escrow because I want to keep it in my bank, my control. 
Yes. So I, if I change my mind, I can do different things. Not, I'm stuck with the plan. So uh, Cheryl is fine. Cheryl is just uh, facilitating, putting the deal together. She's She knows all the different parties. When the underwriter gets assigned, that's the one we have to be really careful on what we share. Uh, because if that puts forward, you know, it, it gets locked in. Yeah, and Cheryl won't share share anything with the underwriter yeah, without yeah. us. We, oh, okay. She she will prepare the package. Okay. Uh, usually, like Cheryl, Derek, whoever is putting the package together and presenting, uh, I really like Cheryl because uh, she really thinks from our perspective. Very nice. Uh, like what would best work for us best to run the deal, you know, all the going looking forward. Uh, so she will come and tell us, hey, don't do this or do this, or I need this detail. Uh, we need to prepare something. Uh, so she, I really like her for that, that she will work with us on uh, putting the right answer, putting the right information forward um, in, in, a, in a clean as well as uh, ethical way. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This is great. I'm so happy. I'm glad <laughs> I joined too. the call. <laughs> me too. Me too. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. We'll talk in the morning. Okay. Uh, Alan, we'll catch up. Uh, I'll, I'll work on some things the, the later evening, but we'll catch up in the morning. Maybe we'll start up before nine o'clock and do some things if you're yeah. available. Uh, I'll yeah. send the email to Cheryl and LOI to you later in the night. I'm going oh, to sounds pick good. Sounds good. Yes. Thank you. Great. Thank good you. job. Talk Thank you, everyone. Just for Cook's Creek, do you want me to send the LOI out or uh, did you want to take the honors for that? I'll take the ownership of that. Uh, Cook. Sorry, sorry. That was for Sanjay. <laughs> oh, Cook's Creek. Oh, you oh, know what? Let's, let's look at that LOI. Uh, earlier, my word wasn't working, but now my word is working. Yeah, it's it's already converted into a PDF. Um, oh, we reviewed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, go ahead and send it out and copy me and just say, hey, uh, I'm on Sanjay's uh, team and let's let's do this with Massive Capital. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. Okay. Thanks for the awesome. message. Sorry, Ellen, <laughs> not that. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> That's okay. I love your enthusiasm. <laughs> but yeah, hey, hey, we have some you exciting know, you, ones in the pipeline. You might be able to do those three, four deals this way, I think, this year. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm trying my best. That's... Yeah, yeah, this is good. Okay, thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you. Bye. Alrighty. See you guys in the morning. See you in the morning. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.